welcome back to the life story of Nancy Hayes. Nancy Lee Hayes, you were born a war baby on the 11th of January 1943 to Lola and Alan. But you don't meet your father, who's in the Air Force, until you're 18 months old. You live in Sydney's seaside suburb of Manly with your mum, your grandmother and two aunts, so there's plenty of affection. And by the ripe old age of three, you're already dancing, singing and fantasising about a life on stage. A, you're adorable, B, you're so beautiful. It's your Aunt Leone and cousin Amanda. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Good. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good. No, 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 no. Now, what's the significance of that song? That's the very first song she learned to sing. First ever? First ever. And we always knew that she'd be a, a dancer and hopefully a career in show business. She learned to walk at a very, very early age, tiptoeing around an occasional table in Mum's lounge room. And at 10 months, she took off. And to prove it, I bought her first pair of walking shoes. Aren't they beautiful? They, they weren't... <laughs> they weren't like this, but she had them gilded later on for her other aunt, Linny, who unfortunately died two years ago. They're yours, Nancy. That's lovely. And, 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 and Amanda, you, you and Nancy are like sisters, aren't you? Yes, that's right. She's been like a sister to us. She doesn't have any brothers and sisters herself, Mike, and so her cousins fill that bill. And as you said, at 18 months old, Nancy's father eventually came home from war and he was riddled with malaria. And he fell asleep in the lounge room when he first arrived home. And she was so amazed at who was this stranger in the house <laughs> snoring <laughs> that they eventually made a beautiful friendship together. And I know Nancy, if he and your mum and Auntie Lynn and Nan, if they were alive and here today, they would be so proud of you and filled with joy because you certainly deserve this honour that's bestowed on you tonight. We all love you very much, Nancy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. Nancy, you're five in 1948 when you move to the Hunter Valley where the family manages hotels. When you're seven, you have a very bad fall from your bicycle. And soon after, a diagnosis discovers a tumour in, of all places, your right thigh. And you spend six long months in hospital. Did the doctor know that all you wanted to be was a dancer? He asked me before I went under the anaesthetic what I wanted to be when I grew up. And I said, a nurse or a dancer. And I remember he said, well, I'll have to do a very good job, won't I? <laughs> were, you, were you worried at that stage about...? Well, I mean, I was very young and I didn't really understand the full complications, what could have happened, but certainly it was, uh, I was very lucky to have that particular doctor who um, was called Dr Alan Roberts and he operated out of um, Newcastle. And you spent 12 months in calipers, In a you? caliper, yes. Uh, and here you are today with a great set of pegs, <laughs> I may say. At the ending. <laughs> Well, by 10, you move back to Sydney and start at the Meldrum School of Dance, where you stand out because of your talent and enthusiasm. Then, tragedy strikes when you're only 11 years of age in 1954. Your father is burnt to death when his delivery truck rolls off the road. Now, you were on your way to meet him by train when you heard. Yes, True? yes. Very hard for an 11-year-old. Yes, it was a big shock for us all. Yeah. So more than ever, you concentrate on your dream of a life on stage while attending Stella Maris College. <laughs> You're always pestering your family to take you to every MGM musical that's around or any pantomime. Now, while your mum doesn't discourage your ambition, she is sceptical and insists that you have a career to fall back on. So after school, you study to become a secretary. Right. But those dance shoes are always in the filing cabinet. True? True. <laughs> So you could rush out? So I could rush out if I heard about an audition. <laughs> <laughs> well, at 17, you do audition for the theatre company J.C. Williamson's. And choreographer and casting director Betty Pounder becomes your mentor, doesn't she? Yes, very much so. And how important was she to you? 
she was everything to my career and she always believed in not only me but all Australian talent. She was a woman that you would see at every show that was ever on. If it was in a, a warehouse, she'd be sitting on a box and looking for new talent and people to encourage. She was um, someone to... Well, I always wanted to please her and live up to her expectations of me. Well, sadly, Betty's no longer with us, as you know, but let's see what you said on her This Is Your Life tribute back in 1980. Oh, it's been your teaching and encouragement and friendship that have got me through every time. I couldn't have done it without you and I wouldn't want to have done it without you. <laughs> Nancy, when you're 18, Betty casts you in the chorus line of one of the most popular musicals of all time, My Fair Lady. And she was one of the shyest little girls I've ever seen. <laughs> it's the man who plays Professor Higgins, Stuart Wagstaff. <laughs> Hi, Stuart. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Uh, just how shy was she? She was very shy. She wouldn't have anything to do with the principal. She'd stand to one side. But as she got used to being in the show, occasionally you'd hear raucous laughter coming from the ballet girls' dressing room. And always it was Nancy doing her shtick up there. And uh, she got herself a little more confidence and then started working with a bit of help from Ian Roberts and Betty Pounder. She became a star in her own right through damned hard work, application, and talent. Congratulations, you're a star. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Please. When you were 20, you joined the chorus in How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. And when the US lead actress Betty Maguire returns home, you are over the moon when you replace her. Now, you haven't seen or spoken to her since 1963, but we managed to track her down in the US for this message. Oh, really? Hi, Nancy. It's Betty McGuire, and am I thrilled that I am doing this. I hear that you are going to have your whole life celebrated, and I've also heard about your wonderful successes. I cannot tell you how, how absolutely fabulous I think that is, but I have to say I'm not surprised because you had a very, very special quality. You know, I don't know if you remember, but opening night in Sydney, you gave me a gift, and it was a little black piece of fluff. It was a kitty cat, and that little kitten fit in my Kleenex box. Well, little do you know, lady, what you started, because after I came back from Australia, I missed having a kitty cat. So you started a whole thing, because I've had nothing but cats since. As a matter of fact, if you notice what I'm wearing, there are kitty cats on it. Do you remember also the slumber party that we had one evening? We were all in our PJs and doing all girly things and talking girly talk, and we had such fun. What you've accomplished, Nancy, is so fabulous and so wonderful, and I am so very pleased that you're going to be celebrated for all this, because talent always has a way of coming out and winning and that's exactly what you've done. You've won. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye. What a lovely message. Oh, God. Mm, yeah. Wonderful. Fantastic. Well, then at 24, it's your big break. The lead role in the musical Sweet Charity. Let's just have a look at you in that 30 years ago. She's a rock and she's a Now, Sweet Charity well and truly establishes you as a major star. But on a personal level, things are about to plummet. 
Your mother falls and breaks her hip and is admitted to hospital. Tragically, she dies from a blood clot. And your grandmother, a diabetic, then dies in the same hospital just six weeks later, two of the closest women to you in your life. And throughout all this, you are still holding together for your daily performances in Sweet Charity. But as they say... The show must go on. It's your co-stars in Sweet Charity, Judy Roberts and Peter Adams. Oh. So, Judy, they must have been very difficult times. It, it, it was that particular time. I was Nancy's understudy and a flatmate and friend. And we were in Melbourne at the time when her mother died. And I, I did have to find her and tell her. But um, and there was a particularly hard line to say in the show. Um, Nikki had to say, do you swear on your mother's life? And she said, yeah, I swear. And I said, well, call up and find out how her mother was. But Nancy is a real pro. She's pounder trained, can cope with any situation or any difficult actor. And um, <laughs> she never plays the star. And uh, I'm a true and loyal friend. And we've done everything from getting dressed in broom closets at El Bongo to <laughs> prawn mornings at Bondi. <laughs> and she's a very true and loyal friend. Oh, thank you. Uh, now, Peter, you and Nancy have been a great team for many years, haven't you? Well, yes, 1967, Sweet Charity. I remember walking across to this piano and this funny little figure came across and I met her and then we worked together. And it was terrific. And she was a star then, and she's a star today and always will be. Then, in 1986, we did it again in Guys and Dolls. But Nancy was born to play Miss Adelaide. Yeah. And she was just wonderful. And I trotted along with her with Nathan Detroit. So I reckon figuring the, the years is about another five or six, and we've got to do it again. We'll do it. <laughs> we'll do it again. <laughs> anyway. The interesting thing is that during the 40s and 50s, there was a policy across Australia to import American and English stars for musicals and straight plays and everything. Well, John McCallum changed all that in the late 60s, and <clears throat> Sweet Charity, I think, was the first one, and Na he gave Nance the chance. She went, woof, grabbed it, and was fabulous. And we've had Australian stars ever since, and this lady was... Oh, due to Nancy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. There are lots of other stars as well as Nancy just said, Jill and Tony, and we could go on, but Nancy was kind of around in the beginning. She's a wonderful woman. She's warm, affectionate, with a dreadful sense of humour, really wicked. <laughs> what are you going to say? <laughs> She's an amazing disciplinarian. She will not stand <laughs> fools gladly or any other way. Near enough is certainly not good enough for Nancy Hayes. It's got to be the best. She encourages young talent. She's desperate for Australian work. She really, really wants an Australian musical. And she never asks anybody to give more than she can give herself. And in the giving department, she gives the best. Congratulations, Thank Nancy. You. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, yeah. Judy. Thank you very much. Right. I'll be glad. Yeah. Thank you, please. And coming up after the break, Nancy Hayes starts to find it tough to stay at the top. Mm -hmm.